the fitness industry is missing the mark on protein. There is not a single study that has found benefits of more than 1.6 gram per kilogram per day. Nearly all data on naturals illustrates that a gram per pound of protein is usually overkill in almost every case. Here the best research recommends 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilo or 0.7 to 1 gram per pound per day. 0.73 to 1 gram per pound is good for the general population, but it's missing a lot of context and probably not good for you. Across the board, today's fitness influencers advocate for a protein target that is probably reducing your muscle growth. And I have the research to back that up. Let me explain. First, you need to understand why protein is important, but eating too much of it can also hurt your muscle growth. Protein is composed of smaller building blocks referred to as amino acids. When you eat food, you first mechanically break it down with your teeth to increase surface area for the enzymes in your stomach to act on. Food then reaches your stomach where proteins are chemically broken down into amino acids. In your small intestine, amino acids cross over into your blood. Amino acids are then transported around your body through your bloodstream. Your body's preferred use for amino acids is as building blocks for protein structures, such as muscle mass. Your body also breaks down muscle proteins continuously. To gain muscle, muscle protein synthesis needs to exceed muscle protein breakdown, resulting in a net positive protein balance. Since protein is literally the building block of muscle tissue, consuming more of it will help you grow more muscle. That said, not all protein you consume will be directed to building muscle. It's also used to build proteins in other tissues in your body, like your hair and your nails. And although it's not your body's preferred option, protein can be converted to both glucose for immediate energy or body fat for long-term energy storage. This conversion is a metabolically costly process, so your body tends to avoid it. You can think of it as needing to pay wire transfer fees to send money abroad. Instead, your body will preferentially use carbohydrates and fats for immediate energy, which are also easier to convert to body fat for long-term storage. But as far as growing muscle goes, consuming too much protein can be wasteful. Since both carbohydrates and fats can make for better fuel for lifting, consuming more protein than necessary can hurt your muscle growth through the opportunity cost. Likewise, it can also literally cost your wallet, since protein sources are far more expensive than both carbohydrate and fat sources. Insufficient protein is no good, since protein is literally what your muscles are made of. Too much protein is wasteful, since it's costly and not the best training fuel. Most influencers today advocate for somewhere between 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. This recommendation almost universally stems from a study I myself have referenced in the past. In 2018, Dr. Robert Morton and his colleagues performed a meta-analysis on protein. Meta-analyses are the gold standard of scientific research, since they look at dozens of studies. They researched all studies that included a control group, where participants were given a protein supplement and where both groups completed a lifting routine lasting at least six weeks. They included nearly 50 studies in total, which is great. They performed a meta-regression, which plots all of the subjects' muscle growth and protein intakes from all of the studies on one graph. This allows you to draw a line through the data that should be the best fit for the data points. The distance between the data points and the meta-regression line should be minimized. This approach has limitations, but it does help you answer the question of how much protein tends to maximize gains in lean body mass. First, Robert and his colleagues tried to draw a simple line. However, this approach didn't work very well. Many of the data points were still far from the line. Instead, they then also tried drawing two lines with a breakpoint. While this visualization was a better fit of the results of the 50 studies, it reduced the distance between data points and the line, that analysis was not statistically significant for what that's worth. The authors even say as much as they present the graph. However, this graph is what people always look at and refer to, including me in the past. The problem with this is that a biphasic line, by its very nature, assumes that there is no more benefit after 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. You are no longer really fitting the line to the data, you are fitting the data to your line. If the data indicated a benefit to higher protein intakes, even just a diminishing marginal benefit, 
The biphasic approach would miss this altogether. It forces a flat slope. And yet, influencers have kept using this as the gold standard for protein recommendations to maximize muscle growth. Now, for a couple of years, this study really was the gold standard, despite its limitations. But that was only true for a brief amount of time. In 2020, a group of researchers in Japan conducted another meta-analysis. However, on top of virtually every study Morton and colleagues had looked at, they also included two dozen new studies. It is simply the better meta-analysis, since it has more data and a better analysis. This new study should be used to inform protein recommendations. But why has this study by Takawa and colleagues not been mentioned nearly as much? Well, it likely simply has to do with the status and eminence of the researchers. As a result, the science-based influencers have simply been echoing the same study's results over and over again. See, fitness influencers probably just haven't seen this better, newer study. The Morton meta-regression has gotten an insane 1,200 plus citations since 2018. In contrast, published only two years later, the Tagawa meta-regression has only received 80 citations. In their analysis, Tagawa and his colleagues adjusted for a few variables that can influence hypertrophy. In one of their analyses, they accounted for age, sex, and duration of the study. In another, they also added weight gain into the mix, since bulking can enhance muscle building. Looking at a total of 72 studies in lifters, and 66 studies where participants didn't lift, here's what they found. When not accounting for weight gain, both lifters and non-lifters saw more muscle growth all the way to 3 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. When adjusting for body weight gained, non-lifters no longer saw benefit of high protein intakes beyond around 1 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. In lifters, however, even when adjusting for body weight gained, a higher protein intake all the way up to 3 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which translates to nearly 1.4 grams of protein per pound of body weight, still increased lean body mass gained. Note that for all of these graphs, there are diminishing returns. Going up to around 1.6 grams per kilogram gives you most of the benefit. After this, you do still see a benefit of consuming more protein, but less of a benefit. This is in line with the findings by Morton and colleagues everyone knows about. However, you'll also notice that in lifters specifically, high protein intakes do cause greater increases in lean body mass. Before I give you some caveats to consider, make sure you pay attention there, here are some rough numbers to consider. If we take this meta-regression at face value, this is how much more growth you'd get from boosting your protein intake. Going from around 0.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight to the usual 1.6 recommendation, you're looking at around triple the muscle growth, 1.2 kilograms of lean body mass gained versus only 0.4. If you go from the usual 1.6 to 3.1 grams of protein, you would gain an additional 0.7 kilograms of lean body mass, or around 55% more muscle growth. In contrast to the popular science-based narrative, there likely is a benefit to higher protein intakes for lifters. Since lifting increases muscle protein synthesis, your body may benefit from consuming more protein than if you didn't lift. Because we're dealing with over 70 studies here, I'm pretty confident that this is a true effect. While this study is stronger than the study by Morton and colleagues that everyone is relying on, there are still limitations to these findings. First, relatively few studies have looked at protein intakes in excess of around a gram per pound. Based on the data reported, only around 23% of the studies included a protein intake above 2 grams of protein. So, take the numbers I mentioned as an estimate, not a set-in-stone figure. Second, many of these protein estimates in studies are based on two-day food diaries. These can be somewhat inaccurate and typically underestimate protein intake. In a lucky twist of fate, this could have unintentionally provided us with a bit more data on higher protein intakes. This brings me to how to change your diet in light of this research. But before I tell you that, here's how to change your training. Use MyAdapt, the coach in your pocket. MyAdapt is the smartest training app out there, scheduled to launch in December this year. In contrast to other training apps out there, it is both science-based and truly individualized. It actually works like a coach would. MyAdapt asks you questions and builds a program from scratch to suit you. MyAdapt adapts to your feedback over time. Go to myodapt.com and sign up to be notified when MyAdapt finally launches. 
you'll receive a free trial and a lifetime discount. Now, for my recommendations. If you want great growth while keeping things practical and cost efficient, the recommendation of 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight is great. Remember, going beyond this does offer diminishing returns and less bang for buck. If you want your best muscle growth, however, go beyond one gram per pound. This isn't always super practical, but it will very likely grow more muscle. How much exactly should you aim for? In my opinion, somewhere in the ballpark of one to maximum 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight is a good idea. I weigh 220 pounds. So to maximize my growth, I'd be looking at 220 to 285 grams of protein per day. Research suggests two populations would benefit from a bit more protein. The first is older lifters. It does seem that elderly can use more protein to compensate for what we call anabolic uh, resistance. Then in terms of uh, a vegan diet, it makes sense that in an animal protein that if you eat meat, it kind of provides the building blocks of muscle in the ideal ratio. Um, that is a little bit worse in, uh, in vegan diets. In addition, plant protein usually is a little bit less digestible. So it's one thing, what's the amino acid profile of a protein, but if you're not fully digesting it, some of that protein gets lost. But again, that doesn't have to be a problem. It's just, you might have to eat more to compensate for the lower uh, quality. That's Jorn Trommelin, one of the world's top scientists on protein for muscle growth. The second population that benefits from higher protein is plant-based lifters. In contrast to animal-based protein sources like meat, whey, and dairy, most plant-based sources of protein are a bit less anabolic. Their amino acid profile is suboptimal, and the digestibility of plant-based proteins is lower than their animal counterparts. So if you're an older lifter or you're plant-based, increasing protein intake by up to 20% is a good idea. But how should you distribute this across the day? How many meals should you have? What's my recommendation? For athletes, I would still say I would aim for four meals a day because that's extremely simple. That is like the most socially desired meal, uh, meal pattern. Then take an extra meal prior to sleep. That is like if you add an extra meal, which point of the day will best increase your distribution, it will be prior to sleep. Do I think all of that will make much difference? No, but it's so easy. Just do it and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So four meals a day is a great starting place. I like to aim for around 0.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight per meal. Since I weigh 220 pounds, that comes out to 65 grams of protein per meal, four times a day for a total of around 260 grams of protein per day. Discovering this study was definitely a lesson in being willing to change your stance based on new research for me. It was also a lesson in set up some Google Scholar alerts, you pencil neck nerd, and make sure you read actual research versus staying stuck in the evidence-based echo chamber. Let me impart a final message upon you. Shop for gym clothing at rascalapparel.com. I'm proudly sponsored by them. They have a variety of designs, from pop culture references to homages to Greek mythology. Use code WOLF at checkout for some savings and to support me.